So I was debating on waiting to make this video until I got my hair cut later today. My hairline is calling me, but let me know down below in the comments if I should have waited. But anyway, this is my review of the new Google Chromecast, and this is running their new Google TV software, not to be confused with Android TV and YouTube TV and all this other stuff. Anyway, this is a $50 little dongle, and I'm going to let you know how good this is and whether or not you should upgrade from your existing Chromecast or maybe your other streaming device. So let's talk about this thing. So inside of the box, you do get a few things. Things, and two of those things are going to be the wall adapter and also a USB-C cable because Google has made the switch from micro USB over to USB-C, which is definitely very welcome. Um, but one thing about this new Chromecast is that it needs to be plugged in into a wall outlet. So you can't just plug this into the USB port on your TV anymore. And that's because it just needs more power. So that may be a downside to some people, depending on where your outlets are and how many open outlets that you have, but just do know that. But moving along, let's take a look at the Chromecast itself and you can pick this up in three different colors so you can get it in snow white you can get it in sky blue which is the color of this one and then also sunrise pink and compared to previous chromecast this will be bigger but that's not really an issue because this will just be sitting behind your tv set but the other piece of hardware inside of this box is the one that i feel that is just as important as the main chromecast and this is the remote control and this allows you to have a lot more options and a lot more capabilities and then google even color matched the batteries that come inside of it to to match the colors of the control and your Chromecast. So that's a nice little touch. Uh, but I like this control because it's not really too simple. It's not too complicated and everything just really makes sense on it. So at the top, you do have this directional pad and also a button there in the middle that acts as your enter button. And below that, you'll find the back button. You'll find the dedicated Google Assistant button because it does have a microphone that you can use to talk to it. And then also you'll find a home button, a mute button, and also dedicated buttons for YouTube and Netflix. And below them, you'll find the power button and also a dedicated switch source button. So the source button is definitely good because, you know, traditionally with your Chromecast, if you start casting something from your phone or your, your computer, um, it will switch over to that source on your TV that has a Chromecast, but there was no way for you to switch back. But this now gives you that option because this control can be paired with your TV. And if it works, you're able to now press the source button. And on my LG TV, it will bring up my source menu. And as I keep pressing the button, it will kind of cycle through the different sources that I have. Now, unfortunately, there is no way to use this control on my TV to be able to actually select that particular source I want to switch to. But um, over a few seconds, my TV automatically switches over to that source that I'm on. And then now I'm using that. And then if I want to switch back over to the Chromecast, I can press this button again. So being able to do this and also to turn your TV on and off is going to be made possible with the IR blaster that's on this control. But also if you want to control the sound coming out of your like sound bar, you can um, make sure that you have this plugged into an HDMI CEC port on your TV, which most new TVs have. And then now you can use the volume buttons on the right hand side of this control to be able to turn the volume up and down. Okay, so now let's talk about software. So this is running Google TV and this software is going to be what separates it from your previous Chromecast, but also what helps bring it on the same playing field as your Roku or your Apple TV devices. And because this is a Google product, it's all about recommendations, looking at what you like to watch and trying to recommend things that you might want to start watching. And so the first page is going to be the For You page. And you can see here that it has, you know, just some things that I might want to watch based on my previous viewing habits. And I was actually thinking about re-watching The Last Dance again. So it, uh, it did pop up there, so it did a good job at that. Um, but then also too, it'll show me some of my apps that I have installed on here. And then also some things that I was already watching so I can quickly get back into these things and start watching them again. And then you have your trending page. And then you also have a section down here for recommended YouTube videos because YouTube is also integrated into this. And so I'm, I already watched this video from Austin Evans, but it's a good one. Uh, and then also, of course, movies, reality shows. You have a lot of different categories here to hopefully be able to help you quickly find something. But as I mentioned before, this does have a Google Assistant button so I can do a voice search if I wanted to. Watch Flossie Carter. All right, boom, there we go. It brings up my videos, not my videos, but videos from Flossie um, that I can watch and I can quickly just tap on this one. He just uploaded this one and then now we'll open up the YouTube app and now we'll go ahead and start playing that and now I can watch this um, in 4K, of course. I don't even know if he even records in 4K, but I can watch 4K videos um, on here if I wanted to. But now what happens when you do a voice search for something that's available in multiple apps? So let me do a search real quick. Watch The Walking Dead. 
Okay, so it shows me that uh, this is available to watch on Netflix, but if I do scroll over, you can see that it shows me that there are four ways to watch this, and now I can select either Netflix, I can watch it on YouTube TV because I do have a DVR, Sling, and also Google TV. So it does give you multiple options, and this is very convenient. And sometimes I have found that it didn't give me like the YouTube TV option in the beginning, but then the next day it did. So uh, this part still does need a little bit of work, but for the most part, it does work well. Now this next section is the one that I use the most and this is for live TV and so this syncs with YouTube TV and because I use YouTube TV as my main TV source um, this is going to be perfect for me because it has some things that I might want to watch that are already live and then also it does have this TV guide that gives you that very convenient red line there to let you know how far into the programming that it is in and then also too you can scroll down and see what else is coming on and then you can tap into that and then this will open up the YouTube TV app and then now this will allow you to do different options with that particular show if you wanted to and so honestly because I use YouTube TV this by itself alone is kind of one of the reasons why I'm going to be using this Chromecast on my main TV all the time. All right, so now let's go to the movie section. And one thing I wanted to show you real quick here is that you see this little lock icon that's by the price. And so this means that I either need to buy this particular piece of content um, or I might not have the app or I'm not signed into the app. So I would need to like register for that service in order to be able to watch it. So this will be showing you things that you don't currently have like access to, um, but it will kind of show these as recommended things that you might might want to watch so uh, sometimes it can give you too many of those in my opinion and I wish that it would show me more things that I already have access to but again it's a good way to kind of discover new things that you don't already know about now this Chromecast does support 4k HDR Dolby Vision and also Dolby Atmos so you have access to some of the best quality when it comes to sound and video quality now one thing I didn't notice is that uh, when I do load up something like 1917 here it does take you know maybe like five to ten seconds for it to completely buffer and give me the best quality and so something like the Apple TV 4K was a lot faster as far as like loading up your content and giving you the best quality right away. But besides that, the 4K content looks really good on here. So I really like the quality from the stream itself. Not as good as the, the Apple TV 4K, but still looks really fantastic. And so with TV shows, it's mostly the same thing as I showed you before with movies. And then when you go over to this app section here, you can actually customize this particular section. So I can press and hold on this and now I have the option to move it. And so now I can kind of move this down the line here, or if I watch it a lot, I can keep it up front. And then I just need to press to confirm that and then hit back. And then now you have your customized section here. So I did wish that this allow you to do this with some of your favorite shows that you watch. So I can have that always on a permanent section on the screen. So a little bit more customization would definitely be more welcome. But the good thing about this Chromecast is that you do have access to a lot of different Android apps. So not every single app works just yet, but you do have some games, you have other different things that you can load up here. And as far as the games, you can actually pair a Bluetooth controller. Like I paired my um, Xbox Elite wireless controller here. And so this allows me to play the games um, right here from my TV sets. And then also if you do have some Nest cameras, you can bring up your Nest video stream right here on the TV if you wanna check into things. Um, but one thing that's weird is that this doesn't support Google Stadia just just yet, but that will be coming in the first part of 2021. But it's kind of weird that it didn't make the cut in the beginning. And I think that would have been a really good thing to have. But let me clarify something real quick. If you can't wait for Stadia to come out in 2021, or you wanna try the Xbox X Cloud game streaming platform, um, you can get those kind of like side loaded to work with this Chromecast. And there are some videos to kind of show you how to get this working. But if you want things to come officially, um, you have to wait a little bit. And then with this library section, this is going to be showing me content from my DVR that I have with YouTube TV, and also a bunch of different movies that I might have. And because I do use the Movies Anywhere uh, platform, that allows me to log in with my Apple TV um, login and also to my uh, Amazon Prime and my Google Play movies. And I can have all of those things synced together. So no matter where I purchase the movie at, it will be able to show up on all the different platforms. But with this in particular, it just kind of brings everything together in one single section, which I do like. So I don't have to do a lot of looking around for stuff. And so, yeah, this is pretty much it. So this device is pretty straightforward. And I think because of the remote control being really good and also too with the software being really tailored towards giving you a lot of recommendations and having all of your different sources of video content in one single place. I think this is perfect for me. And like, as I said before, I think I'm going to be using this as my primary thing that I want to have on my TV in the beginning. And then, yeah, if I do want like the highest quality as far as watching, you know, video streams, as far as 4K, HDR, Dolby content, I might switch over to my Apple TV. But I think this with the integration with YouTube TV gives me exactly what I'm looking 
looking for as far as something to replace my traditional TV interface and allow me to be able to browse live TV content pretty quickly and also to other you know pre-recorded or movies and TV shows already out there um, very quickly in one single place. Um, so yeah, for 50 bucks, I think it's a really good solution and it really depends on what you already are using right now. So maybe you have a bunch of different devices already set up and this might not be that attractive to you, but I think if you were looking to upgrade one of your older TVs to something more fresh, something new, uh, I think this is kind of like, this would be my personally, my, my go-to option to go with right now. So uh, anyway, guys, what do you think? Leave your comment down below what you think about this new Chromecast and be sure to like this video if you did like it and also to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. But thanks for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace. Thank you.